Greetings, Dragon Ball Infinity, Life Psycho, Role Play Review, 15, what is it, April? It's April, right? Yeah, it's April. Yeah. 2017. Yeah. Pre-date night. This log takes place with Sam and Dumasten before Sam goes out on his date with Requius. I'm assuming this takes place sometime while Requius is doing negotiations. As a diplomat on Earth, you know, working out a trade treaty and whatnot. Anyway, so Dumaston summons Samuel, and then the two have a little conversation which boils down to Sam, I need the Dragon Balls. Samuel, you know, fuck you, those are Requiuses. And then Dumaston's, no, seriously, I really need them. And then Samuel's like, they're hers. If she wants them, she'll give them to you. If she not, they're hers. Blah, blah, blah. They talk back and forth, and uh, Samuel's position basically remains the same, even though Doomiston tells him, I'm going to kill the fucking dragon. He doesn't tell him his whole plan, obviously, because, you know, security reasons. Although, telling Samuel, bad plan, especially if he's getting romantically involved with someone. But hey, that's Doomiston's choice. Not that it was really his choice. He would have just left it at that. Samuel would have been sent back, and then he could have asked Requiem, but no! The demon, Lapidus, or Ipidus, or whatever the fuck his name is, decided to dick wave and brag and gloat and say, Neener, 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 he's not telling you something. Which sparked Sam's curiosity, and apparently I'll get to read a log of Doomston passing on more information through a Mindscape spell. So, yay, at least Samuel will learn the truth. Anyway, at the end, uh, Samuel gets sent back, and he has some snazzy new clothes for date night that are the current trends on Earth. No idea if that's what he'll actually wear. He seems to indicate that he'd already decided on something to wear in the post before that. Regardless, good roleplay, mates. Date Night Part 1. This is the start of Sam and Requius' date, obviously, from the title. Anyway, Samuel put on his suit. Uh, somebody remind this dumb fucker that he's a mimic and he could have just made a suit for himself, on himself. And I don't know, taken a form that wasn't horrifying. Or, you know, just turned his armor into a suit of some sort while keeping all the carapace, hard stuff looking stuff underneath it. I don't know. You're a fucking mimic. What the hell are you doing with a fabric suit? Not sure why Demiston didn't mention that to you. Also, Samuel keeps referring to himself as it, which is fine. But it's don't go out on romantic weekends and shit, on romantic dates. It's pretty much reproduces asexually, just like Dimston mentioned. What the hell would you have in need for a date? Anyway, all those mind farts aside, Samuel's running a little late because he had to struggle to get into the suit, and Requius has already got a meal prepped out. Apparently, she's got some favors to call in because she's she supplies some sausage. Copperville smoked sausage. She loves her sausage. Anyway, Moving on from innuendo, Samuel eventually gets there. He's a couple of minutes late. Requius is just arriving, er, arrives before Sam, still brandishing a bottle of whatever the hell she picked up at the store before dealing with Thug Boy. They go in and they eat pasta. It's never ending pasta. It's a little bit clownish. Something that struck me was. Samuel still looks like Chaos Max did in his war form. Like, yes, people might start being more accepting and stuff, but that's still gonna get more than just a few looks. Some people should have been screaming and fleeing and shit. Ah, well, it didn't happen, apparently. Anyway, they eat pasta. Probably a couple of hundred thousand grand worth of pasta. Lots of pasta. Oh, gods. And Sam tries not to get too messy. He was going to be all cordial and polite and use silverware and everything, you know, like a real person. Requius just pissed that right out of the water by using the through skin absorption method. So Samuel eventually decides to do that, you know, because that's how he normally absorbs biological material in mass. When it's all said and done, she's ended up eating five trays worth of food, not plates, mind you. By the way, nice use of your energy barrier skill to have a train of plates behind you walking to the table initially. That was creative. 
Samuel wasn't nearly as uh, finessed with his response. He just packed trays on top of one, one another and then extended his hand so he could carry it all. Uh, they talk briefly about what Sam plans on doing after they're all done with stuff. And Sam's just like, I'm going to be riding your dick. He's dick riding requies. That's pretty much all he wants to do. He's like, I want to help you. Because I think it'll be safe. Because I want to find a safe place for me and my kids. And I want to help you. And Requies is like, yeah. Shit, what was her, what was her fucking town's name? New Requiem? Or some shit like that. It's like, it's a fresh start. You can come on in and help. It was hilarious. And then the log ends and they go on to the second part of their date. Looking forward to seeing the guns of a old warship and whatnot. Good roleplay. Date night, part two. The conclusion of the date between Samuel and Recreus, the it and the she, although really they're both just biologically engineered its. Eh, whatever. Uh, Requia spends most of the time coming on herself because she's fucking thrilled to see the Atlantic. A naval ship that apparently has the first mass driver fucking cannons. I think that's what they were. Mass driver, some shit like that. Anyway, really big guns basically fire off any type of mass. So, wide arsenal there. Powerful enough to punch a hole through the moon. So, yeah. Although apparently those were just prototypes. Regardless, she enjoys the tour. She and Samuel walk about the museum after Samuel flies her over for a aerial shot. And then at the end it gets interesting because she gives she harkens back to the part where Samuel said that he would do anything for, her, you know, to help her. And she's like, "Well, what happens if I wanted to kill someone?" Because she's like, what if, what if one of your friends came after me? And he's like, well, I'll fuck them up for you. Because I'm not going to let them hurt you. And then she says, like, oh yeah, and what happens if I want to kill them? And he's like, huh, hadn't really, hadn't really thought about that. I don't know. Depends on the context. This, of course, follows the moral dilemma. What happens if she has to kill some people in order to save some other people? Samuel's like, fuck yes. I'll definitely help you do that. And, you know, it was just an amusing moral quandary. Doomsten and his plans being what they are. Surprisingly, Sam didn't mention anything about the Dragon Balls during the date. Maybe he's trying to get laid. It's trying to get laid. Not sure how that works, but I bet he'll be using his fucking shape-shifting powers to get it done because he can't use the damn things to fucking make a goddamn suit, you jackass. Regardless, this was a very good, light-hearted arc, even with the dark stuff at the end of this fucking second one, you know, where Requius is, like, uh, either pushing the boundaries to see how far he'll go and, you know, how much she can manipulate Sam, or, you know, just trying to teach Sam that he has to have a mind of its own and apply his own best judgment and not just be a horny little puppy. You know, stuff like that. Regardless, kudos... Was a good log. Nice tour of the ship. I really liked the touch with the captain of the ship. You know, the young motherfucker who was given command after the original captain died. Nice touch there, Requius. Good job. Nice touch with the suit, even though, Sam, I know, the day you wanted to be all nice, but did you really need a clone? Come on, did you? Like, I just wanted to smell nice for you, but you smelled like cheap cologne instead. I don't know. Whatever. Good job, again. That was pretty amusing to read. Thousand's Journey. Singularity. Short log, well written, starts with Thousand in a mind simulation battling his allies, who are apparently trying to beat his ass in his mind at the time. Then it uh goes into him trying to navigate around a few quantum singularities. You know, get around those black holes and stuff so we can get to the center of the cosmos. Good planning, good planning plans on uh, getting to the center of the cosmos, and he does so. Takes a little bit of time, but you know, it was whatever. And then he universal, or dimension hops, I guess, would be a 
an appropriate way to say it. Not sure if a mortal should have that power, but whatever. Had to go through quite a, tr quite a track to get to that point, so... Anyway, he's basically doesn't really go into what he does while he's in the other dimension. Or another dimensional universe, whatever. But, apparently he was there for quite a while, and then he pops back into place in our reality. Fun times. Anyway, short log, but good one. Good job. Especially not getting sucked into a gravitational well. Should probably have been rolling dice for a fuck up around that point. Like, oh, am I actually going to do it, or am I going to kill myself? Eh. Should have been an option. I don't know, that's just me, though. New Allies and Hardy Foes, Parts 1 and 2. Alright, this log has gray fur. She finally figured out how to do the proper syntax to get her name in it. Instead of using the little g after chat. Fantastic, that's an improvement. Still a little bit of problematic with the uh, capitalization at the beginning of sentences and the letter i, but that's okay. She's getting better. There's marketable improvement. Anyway, this log starts out with Grafer walking through the woods and then fucking an arrow gets shot into a tree by her. She's like, what the fuck is this shit? Why does everything keep trying to kill me? And then it's not something trying to kill her. A little boy runs at her with an arrow in his shoulder. So she uh, stops him and tries to figure out what's going on. He's fleeing, obviously. She leaves the arrow in his shoulder. I don't know, maybe a better... A better route would have been fleeing with the boy, you know. Given she's ascended, she might have been able to go faster than the kid with an arrow in his shoulder. But uh, that's neither here nor there. So instead, she decides she's going to buy the fleeing kid some time. And it's funny, because I think the fleeing kid might be the same kid who was in the uh, log with Cryo Edge. I guess that's might be one of Kuro Gain's go-to NPCs now. Regardless, Grafer, in true heroic fashion, you know, since she's not going to flee with the boy, rushes towards the enemy. And they ask him, or they ask her if she's seen the little boy. And she's basically like, fuck you, you don't get the boy. And then she decks the motherfucker. Also, she's apparently 9'6. That is a massive Amazonian fucking woman. That's what that is. Holy shit. 9 feet 6 inches. So she gets into a little scuffle, but lucky for her, Requius was doing business at the time. This takes place in the law chronologically before she goes to do proper, you know, negotiations with the diplomat stuff or before the date night while she's looking for recruits to take back to New Requiem. One of the two. It's mentioned somewhere in the log. Or I think in comments after to place it in the timeline. Anyway, so Greyford sets off to beat the crap out of Axeman and all of his little cronies. Greyford even tries to help out when reinforcements arrives, you know, pointing a cannon. Bitches the love of cannons. At the reinforcements, you know, trying to make sure it stays one-on-one. -on -one. But Greyford's like, no, fuck that, none of that. They all get knocked out. Knockout for you, a knockout for you. You know, kind of pointless. Anyway, she ends up collapsing, and Requius leaves her her card and shit. So, that was nice of the Tier 5 character for the Tier 0. Hi, wifey. Sup, bitches? Anyway, good roleplay, good job, Grafer. You're showing improvement over what I've read thus far. Fantastic. Keep up the work and all that stuff. And that was your roleplay review, and I'm still horrendously far behind, go figure, maybe if I actually did this more than once every couple of weeks I'd catch up faster, but eh, it happens. Maybe if I could motivate myself more, but it's not easy. Uh, keep roleplaying, and I will eventually keep doing the goddamn reviews, because that's what I do, apparently. That's apparently the only thing I've been doing lately, I haven't even been writing for my fucking PC, it's ridiculous. Good jobs, everybody.